Good morning, everybody. Have you all been having a good time at WordCamp San Francisco? Yeah? It's not been bad, not bad, not bad. Before we get started, I would like to give a heartfelt thank you and round of applause to our headline sponsors, Automatic, Dreamhost, and Bluehost. Without their help, we wouldn't be able to do what we do today. So thank you to all of them. If you get a chance to, please go down by their booth later and say thank you in person. I think it'd be really meaningful to them. All right, so the state of the word. This is the yearly address um, that we give to talk about where WordPress has been, where it is, and where it's going. My name, as Jane said, is Matt Mullenweg. I'm a co-founder of WordPress and founder of Automatic. I've been doing this about eight years now. Um, just to get it out of the way in the beginning, yes, the hair has changed. This is what I looked like last year which sort of elicited more of like a kids in the hall, news radio type feel. But according to Jane, this new look is more this guy. <laughs> I can't even sing. I don't know. I mean, Barry Gibbs, it also inspired the attendees of WordCamp San Diego a few weeks ago to create a new tagline for WordPress, which we are seriously considering adopting. <laughs> So easy, a caveman can do it. <laughs> well, I've been thinking about more about that, more than just that. I've been thinking about WordPress all day, every day. The growth, the innovation, the evolution, where we're going, and that's really what I want to talk about. Sort of what we are, we're going to have three sections. What we are, who we are, and sort of where we're at and where we're going. This time last year, we released version 3.0, named for Felonious Monk. Pictured here, smoking tobacco. <laughs> included a number of great features, including one of my personal favorites, the admin bar. Post formats, which uh, allows you to have different types of post types in your, uh, in your themes. We introduced the 2011 theme, which was our first default theme, well, our second default theme in six years, and also the first one with a responsive design, meaning it works great on any size screen, as seen here. We also started to put in some more customization stuff in 2011, including Great headers like we did in 2010, but new features, like for example, to allow you to randomize the headers or show different ones on different pages. You guys asked for a faster and leaner user interface. We've done that with significant speed increases in WordPress 3.2. Also, you asked for an optimized UI. Get out of our way while you're doing things. For this, I actually wanted to rewind. We're going to take a trip back in time, very Gibbs style. This is the very first WordPress 7.1.71 screen. We'll go through the world here, 1.1, 1.2. 1 if you can see between, uh, 1.5, added some color, ooh, 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, not much changed here. If you look between these, pretty much all that changed is we added a little, a little something on the buttons there, see the gradient? That was hot. <laughs> redesign number one, redesign number two, refresh, Redesign number three, and finally, the right screen has gone all the way to being something that literally can disappear to get out of your way. My second favorite feature currently in WordPress. There's been an innovation loop. I like to say that innovation in core begets innovation in plugins, and there's been some very cool stuff happening in plugin and themes the last year. Uh, the shelf theme is one that I really like. Uh, as you can see, it's sort of a... Has, it uses post formats very interestingly and actually has a cool horizontal design that can go back and forth. Which are things like the OnSwipe plugin, which creates a tablet uh, formatted version, almost flipboard like, of any blog, any WordPress powered blog in the world. So things like Job Roller, uh, which is, this is running a theme from App Themes, it's running on Woo Themes, which really uses WordPress not as just a blog or CMS engine, but actually as an application platform that they built something completely novel on. And then finally, this just came out a few weeks ago. You guys seen Presswork? It's basically a new theme framework that, in addition to having you know, sort of all the HTML5 goodness and everything, actually takes it so you have front-end editing. You can go to the front of your theme and drag and drop widgets around and move the content area. It's a lot of fun. On the plugin side, we saw some innovation in caching. Super Cache and W3 Total Cache are doing great. SEO is doing well as well. We got WP SEO and the all-in-one SEO pack. Blogs are more backed up and secure than ever. Backup Buddy for backups and VaultPress for both security and backups. 
And something that we started talking about first in March at South by Southwest, um, one of the things that has aged me quite a bit this year, is we've been working on feature parity quite a bit. Automatic has, between the two things we call WordPress.com.org. This has manifested itself in a plugin we released in March called Jetpack, which shows part of the vision, but not all there yet. But the idea is that once you're in WordPress, you're part of the family. We've always said that. But there's always been trade-offs between the two, whether you want to host it yourself and have complete control. You lose some of the social features or some of the you know, community features. Um, you shouldn't need to. And that's what's going to be happening this year, hopefully. There's a cool concept called desire paths. Um, it's probably an urban myth or legend, but the idea was, this, the story goes, that there was this university built. And instead of putting sidewalks between the buildings, they left it all as grass. And basically, they saw where the grass eventually got worn in. And um, that's what they paved. Uh, the cool thing about this is that it, it wasn't where they necessarily were going to put the sidewalk. Sometimes that desire paths, this is called desire paths. And it leads you in unexpected directions. Uh, I've also heard this called paving the cow path, uh, which maybe means the people at the university were cows. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it was Aggie University. But plugins and themes are the manifestation of desire paths within WordPress. We look to them to see what's going on. We create APIs to enable what we feel are the best adjacent possibilities in plugin and themes. Plugin and theme authors take this in ways we would have never imagined. And then we go back and make new APIs so it can do the next big thing. And this sort of virtuous loop is, I think, what's really driven a lot of the innovation in WordPress the past year, and what you guys have already benefited from. I want to jump over. We did something this year. Oops. The first ever WordPress survey. And normally surveys aren't like a really exciting thing that you talk about. But this was pretty neat, because it was almost like a census. It was like the very first time we really looked at WordPress users and said, well, what are you doing? What's going on? We haven't really had a lot of insight. We had over 18,000 people respond this year uh, from literally all over the world. I love this slide. <laughs> Let's zoom in a little. Uh, we'll go to Cameroon first, which is right there. Don't worry, I didn't know where it was either. <laughs> so we got the big arrow <laughs> right over there below Nigeria. And we have a fellow there who took the survey named I'm going to butcher this. Joel Mayer from Cameroon. He's a singer and songwriter, joelonline.net. In addition to being a singer and songwriter who built his own website, he is building sites for the Cameroon Association for the Prevention of Blindness as a, on a volunteer basis. Over in Greenland, we have Christian Sorensen, who is apparently revolutionizing the Nook Greenland web market by using web WordPress to create businesses better than the business uh, websites better than the businesses have ever had. He said his business is going fantastic. And then there's some place so small, you can't even see it on the map, the Maldives? Maldives? We just got the English versus the American people here. <laughs> this is an especially cool story. It's Mohammed Yassif. And he is, has three blogs, actually. One for the blog of the boy right there named Yafao, who is a child with cerebral palsy living in the Maldives. Second, his, uh, the association for the disability, ability, the A in ability is disability is capitalized in development. And finally, his personal blog is running on WordPress. You notice I mentioned that a few people were building sites for other people, some nonprofit, some for profit. 53% um, of the people, or about 9,500, self described themselves as building WordPress powered websites. And 36% of that, or about 3,300, were actually described themselves as. Uh, solo entrepreneurs or owning the business that they were building the websites for. So the 53% included people working for companies that build primarily WordPress websites. So it was literally all over the world. But last week, I happened to be in St. Louis at a WordCamp there. And I got to meet two firms that were doing some cool stuff with WordPress. Uh, the first is called New Concept. And the fellow in the middle there is Brett Coleman. And he's been doing websites for a long time. But he's recently started using WordPress to build them. And his business has gotten better. It's to the point now where he now employs his wife and his sister full time, which is very neat. There was another interesting company there called Go Brand Go, also in St. Louis. They started nine months ago. The company was founded nine months ago. There are already almost 15 full time people cranking out about two websites per week uh, for clients around the St. Louis area and more. Two a week. That's pretty cool. Let's do a quick little survey here. Who here has more than one WordPress website? Raise your hands. That is pretty much everyone. 
Keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Wave them like you just don't care. No. <laughs> More than 10 websites, keep your hands up. More than 20 websites. More than 100 websites. More than 10,000 websites. <laughs> okay, if you still have your hands up, you either work for WordPress.com or you're a spammer. <laughs> we found from a small percentage of the people, actually, we didn't want to double count, so we only counted people who said they were either a solo entrepreneur or the owner of their business. Um, so from about 6,800 6, people who met that criteria, we had over 170,000 websites created by them, an average of about 25 per person. So those of you who had fewer than 25 websites, you need to get cracking. You're below average. No, you are great. <laughs> we also had some free form questions. I like this one. What's the best thing about WordPress? You know, we, you we're feeling down that day. We need a little boost. Number one thing, far and away, ease of use. It was uh, 400 developers used this exact phrase. Everybody digs ease of use. By the way, bonus points if you're getting the references of the albums that we're referencing in all these slides. Um, here's some quotes from there. Ease of use in the five minute install, which is 30 seconds on my hosting provider. Maybe Bluehost or Dreamhost. Flexibility for the developer and ease of use for the consumer through the dashboard. Ease of use for my id 10 t customers. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Something wrong with this keyboard, maybe you left the num lock on. So this was all developers. Users also loved it. A full 20% of users used the exact phrase, ease of use or easy to use, in their responses. The exact phrase. And in fact, it was so prevalent that of the 25,000 words that were in all of the free form responses, 2,500 of them were exactly easy or ease. 10% of all words in the responses uh, were that. Other big thing? Who can guess what the number two thing was? Community, of course. Community of developers all helping each other. It's an all-around awesome package from the product to the community, and it works. It's updated often. The community provides tons of additional functionality and answers. Who here has ever been on the WordPress.org forums? Just at all. It's pretty much everyone. Keep your hand up if you've answered a question there. Oh, cool. I always like asking that, because that is, in fact, how I got my start uh, with B2 eight or nine years ago. Um, you don't need to know a lot to participate on the forums, as evidenced by how little I knew <laughs> when I first started helping people on the B2 forums. Um, but literally, I had just sort of stumbled across. The movable type thing was kind of hard. I stumbled across B2, which is the predecessor of WordPress. Um, I had some questions on the forum. Someone answered me. And I just started going back to check for answers. I know someone asking something that I already figured out. I thought, well, I could answer this. I don't know a lot, but I could answer this. And that really, uh, it was all downhill from there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> to here. But it's a good point that it's one of the best ways to get involved. If you're thinking about, I've met a lot of people this weekend who said, I'd love to contribute more to WordPress. Hanging out in the forums and just sort of looking for someone um, is a fantastic way to sort of just dip your toe into the community. OK, so we also asked people what the number one complaint was. We wanted both sides of it. And um, there was a similar to the ease of use dominance. There was a, one word that kept popping out. <laughs> I love this slide. <laughs> <laughs> plugins. People listed the ah, plugins not working, having to upgrade plugins. Plugins have security problems. Finding the best plugins was one that came up quite a bit. We now have over 15,000 plugins in the repository, a number that we're very proud of because I believe it exemplifies the breadth and depth of the ecosystem, development ecosystem around WordPress. But you don't need 15,000 plugins. Right? You need one <laughs> that you're looking for, or two that do the job. Or, uh, you know, I think the only person who runs 15,000 plugins is maybe Mark Riley. He installs every single plugin that gets submitted to check it. But you don't need this. So it's, it's hard to find these things. So we have a little mini announcement today that part of the sort of year of improvements we've made to WordPress.org, we started digging into plugins and themes and seeing sort of what was making it so when you searched that there were so many results and it was hard to pick through them. And one is just there's a bunch of results. Like there's a lot of stuff out there. So we decided to institute a new policy, which is if a plugin or theme hasn't been updated in two years, we're, gonna, we're not going to take it down. We're going to start hiding it 
from the search results, both on WordPress.org and within your dashboard. <laughs> This is like 18 in WordPress years. <laughs> this is actually a really long time. I mean, when you think two years ago, we were on like version 2.8. That was one of those funny looking designs in the middle before the current good one. Uh, we feel like this is a, an ample cutoff. It's ample time. And in fact, one of the oldest plugins that people actually used, Mark Jaquist, subscribe to comments, actually as a result of this policy has finally been updated. So round of applause for Mark. <laughs> There's a book I've been a little bit infatuated with lately. It's called How Buildings Learn by Stuart Brand. Has anyone read this book out of curiosity? OK, cool. It basically talks about how buildings evolve over time, how uh, things, buildings, and he has a lot of amazing pictures. You can kind of see on this title of you know, drawings or photos from buildings 100 years ago, and then at different points, how they changed, how the owners changed them. And there's a cool quote in the beginning from Lewis Sullivan, who was a Chicago high-rise designer in 1896, he said, form ever follows function. Form follows function. We've all heard that a thousand times, right? Well, with buildings, it's not quite right. So let's jump ahead 40 or 50 years to one of my favorite pundits, Winston Churchill. He had an awesome quote. He said, we shape our buildings, and afterwards, our buildings shape us. It's kind of beautiful. I love the turn of words there. Stuart Brand actually posits that neither, well, both were almost clairvoyant in their predictions of how cities were going to evolve. Um, neither was entirely right. Because what happens is that we shape our buildings, and our buildings shape us, and then we shape them again. Or as Stuart Brand puts it, function reforms form perpetually. We're going to come back to this. I think this is a great analogy for how open source and WordPress works. There was a period in architecture um, where people didn't do this, and the buildings were it's a period actually called brutalism, terrible name, <laughs> known for its pillbox-like parking lot structures, um, that their greatest sin wasn't being ugly, as this is not the most attractive building. Um, most of them have been torn down by now. It was big in the 60s. One of the most outspoken critics of brutalism was actually Prince Charles, um, but for the inflexibility, for the fact that they were designed that the architect knew what was best for everyone who was ever going to live in that building. And so, the usefulness of the building did not last longer than the building itself. So while we're talking about ugly things, I would like to take a small interlude into the Fogo. Who knows the Fogo? Like the devil, it takes many guises. This is the first ever recorded instance of the Fogo on the interwebs that we are aware of. It later evolved, blue gradient with a little bit of a twist. We thought it would be gone, but it kept sticking around. Oh, that's the sticker version. Um, perhaps you favor a painterly flourish in your Fogo. And then it got so bad that the Fogo was actually abducted by aliens. <laughs> so it's like Independence Day or something going on there. I have no idea what's going on. But this is a Fogo. And there's some percentage of you in the audience, let's be honest, I'm not going to make you raise your hands, but you say, that looks like the regular WordPress logo. So how do you spot a Fogo? We have this handy guide. So the Fogo on the left is short and squat. You can tell by the top of the W there, does not make it to the beautiful serif that is the signature of WordPress's logo. Where on the right, you have this tall, graceful, elegant, actual WordPress logo as designed and imagined by Jason Santa Maria, which is what you should look for. If you ever see a Fogo, every year I make kind of a request of the WordPress community. A year or two ago was we want to stamp out the lowercase p in WordPress. Well, this year my request is we want to stamp out the Fogo. The Fogo will be a one-term logo. <laughs> Sorry, that was bad. <laughs> but uh, so if you spot it, email the person using it. Uh, the worst thing, the reason this happens is that when you Google image WordPress logo, the Fogo is pretty much like five of the top ten results. So if you see anyone using it, be sure to uh, be sure to ping them vigorously. We make some predictions every single year. Um, last year I made four predictions. And it's always good to keep us honest to loop back on. First, we said there will be more mobile apps. For the win. <laughs> WordPress is now available across, well, basically six platforms and eight sort of device profiles. Um, screens small and large, from the web OS to the iPad. And in uh, doing all these mobile apps, and every single one of these is open source, by the way, on every single platform, has allowed us to experiment 
with the interface in ways we wouldn't otherwise imagine because we're able to build something from scratch. So for example, the approach we took to WordPress on the iOS, which was our very first mobile application, uh, was rough in the beginning, getting better, was different from the most, one of the most recent, which was the Windows Phone 7, which actually has some really inter interesting interface things going on. Second prediction, further humanize the WordPress experience. I don't remember exactly what we were talking about here, but I do have one favorite example, which is the jiggle. Do you guys ever notice this when you log in and you put in the wrong password? It shakes his head. It says, no, you cannot, thou shalt not pass. <laughs> this is an example of, you know, we wanted to add a little bit of a human element to the WordPress interface. Another example we talked about earlier is the Zen writing mode. Not in the Zen writing mode itself, but watch very closely here. You're typing. This is riveting, actually. The mouse is about to come in. Boom. See how it faded in there? And watch, it's about to fade out. These are the things that we get really excited about in WordPress core. You will not believe the number of iterations we get down to the millisecond level of testing how that should fade in and out, just to create the exact right feel where the mouse was on the screen, how close it should be from the top. Should it do it when you're in the text area or on the side? Everything. These are the things that we positively obsess about to try to create the most elegant user experiences and most human user experiences possible in WordPress that hopefully you never notice. Third prediction, inclusion of core plugins. Not so much. <laughs> we talked about doing core plugins. Basically, the idea was a canonical, so we talked about two things, really. One, that we were going to re go back to WordPress.org and spend a release cycle focused on WordPress.org, the website, and making that more useful for you guys. And that's actually been a huge success. Um, it has vastly improved lots of little things. We haven't redesigned it, but lots of little things have gotten better in the past year. And so thank you to Otto and Nason and everyone who's worked on that. Um, but core plugins were the idea that we'd have sort of a canonical set of functionality. Like we'd say, podcasting is really important. We'd create a plugin to do that. The core team would create a plugin to do that. And it ended up that that was a little bit much to bite off, so it did not happen. But our fourth prediction, as I said, that more than 8.5% of the web, which was the number last year, would be on WordPress. And I predicted that, that would go up. And we'll loop back to that. First, we're going to talk about Ken Yehara. Does anyone know this, recognize this man? He is the art director of a Japanese company called Muji, a firm known for its functions where the form follows, or function follows form, um, form follows function, bleh. Wait till we get back to that reform, form, function, perpetually. I'm going to mess that up. Just warning you now. Um, he's the art director for this company called Muji, which makes beautiful brandless products. I mean, like a beautiful messenger bag that just has no logo, no anything. It just works. Um, he gives a really interesting talk. He has this concept of sort of Western versus Japanese design that I think also illustrates some of the approaches of WordPress to design versus other social media platforms. He talks about this German knife, which is a beautiful knife, but it's fun to make fun of the Germans. Um, it's ergonomic, right? This knife, which is beautiful and works very well, affords a certain usage. You know exactly where you should put the, your thumb on that knife, and you can use it much like some social media platforms today afford certain uses, like a Twitter or a Facebook affords a certain way for you to use it. And that is sometimes in line with our customers. And you are not the customer of Facebook because you don't pay anything to Twitter or Facebook. Because you don't pay anything, you're actually the product. The customer is the advertisers. So over time, sometimes the usage they afford or want to encourage might be in the interest of those customers, not you. He contrasts this to the Japanese knife, which is empty. Not empty in the sense that it is, it's undesigned or it's not thought through, but empty like a bowl or a room and that can be filled a million different ways. That the knife, in its simplicity, um, can adapt to many different forms of use. However it's, it's wielded, whether to make sushi or chop vegetables, um, you can hold it in many, many ways. And I think that this is actually the great analogy for how WordPress works, where we have the plugins we have the core adapting to the plugins, which then adapt to the core, and we iterate the things, the things. <laughs> we iterate the features and the functionality and the interface to use it exactly like you want to. It's almost like in the software world, we can switch between the Japanese and the ergonomic knife. We can adapt to exactly how you're using it. I mean, WordPress can be used for anything. I mean, it could be used for like this beautiful Woo themes, uh, tumble log. That's kind of fun. But really, the only limit is your imagination that we all know, probably in this room, there's more unique uses of WordPress, I know I love this thing, <laughs> as there are people. It's 
it really can adapt to whatever you're going to use it for. And I wanted to show a few examples of this, of WordPress in action, both to loop back to some things we talked about last year, um, like, for example, the number 10 website. I hear this is a big thing across the Atlantic Ocean. Um, we have TechCrunch redesigned. I think we have some TechCrunch people here. Boing Boing also redesigned and switched to WordPress from movable type. We've been getting huge adoption in the government sector, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. 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 Consumerfinance.gov. We've seen WordPress, I talked about it used as an application. We've seen it actually used as a game. Uh, there's a site at Rational Games, which is the company from the official company for the website behind Bioshock and System Shock games. Has anyone played those? A few? Oh, cool. It's terrifying. Well, the website is not that scary. <laughs> they actually did some really cool stuff with achievements. You can unlock different achievements on the website. And the way they did their forms, I found really, really cool. Space hack. I love this. The idea of open sourcing space exploration and getting different people uh, trying different ideas with it. Uh, this is a lot of fun. BMX, it's a beautiful, beautiful site. We have artists adopting WordPress like Shepard Ferry. Um, manufacturing quality descent since 1999. Open source cousins like Mozilla, as we're a big fan of everything they do there. They're switching a lot of their websites to WordPress. Oregon, you can ride bikes around. The, I don't ride bikes, but I thought this was pretty cool. You can actually sort of map out different routes. And this is all using, I believe, WordPress custom post types to do this. And then one of my personal favorites, Jay-Z has relaunched his website, thelifeoftimes.com. And it's every single square there is actually a different post. It's really neat. And when you scroll down, it kind of brings you down. You should check out this site. It, it brings you down a little bit. And then there's the navigation is actually sort of a mini part of these squares. Really, really I was really excited about this one. <laughs> So now for our third part. What's next? Jazzville, straight ahead. What is coming in the WordPress world? Well, the thing that personally I'm most excited about that's coming in WordPress is sort of the capabilities afforded by new browsers with HTML5 and CSS. Right now, we have a completely balkanized experience. I'm proud of our six platforms that we're on in mobile. But they're, each one has a different interface, a different sort of way that you use it. And in fact, none of them probably have your custom fields that you're using. None of them have the plugins, the menus that plugins have added. But with the advance of mobile browsers and sort of HTML5 and CSS, we can create adaptive designs. We'll talk about that more in a minute. The second super trend that I think is going to happen this year is the marriage of the reading and writing experience, reading and, writing and consumption. Actually, those are the same thing. <laughs> reading and writing experience for WordPress. Right now, WordPress is one of the better authoring platforms in the world. And that's something that we will continue to iterate on. But to read blogs, if you're not interested in only the WordPress planet, um, it's not a great place to go right now. And WordPress 3.3, which is the next version, trying to anticipate some of the questions here, there's three things that we've identified as some of the fun things that are coming. Um, one is we want to take a look at making the admin responsive, responsive design for the WordPress admin interface. So the idea that it can work beautifully on all sizes of screen, large and small. Second, we're going to take a look at what we call NUX, uh, which stands for New User Experience, or the opposite of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the idea here is that you know, we have added some incredible amount of websites over the past year. People are coming to WordPress for the first time. And it's almost like if you were playing Bioshock and being dumped on like the 15th level when you first come in. I mean, the dashboard is very, very intimidating. So, we started to look at, well, what if we can actually guide people through for the first time? Like, do what the documentation and some of the excellent books out there do for WordPress, and have like, something that says, hey, if, if this is your first time, click here. And you can take a little tour. Or if you're one of the people that's on your 25th, you're perfectly average, you're building a 25th website, you just close it right immediately. And then finally, which you guys have asked for just a little bit, it's better media handling. Who here is on Google Plus? Wow. That's pretty cool. I think that the social story is not finished. Like the adoption of Google Plus in such a short amount of time is definitely says there's, there's room for new entrants there. Um, but there's something I really, really like about Google Plus, which is their, they did a lot of innovative things in the interface, but I really like their image thing. This is uploading images in Google Plus. Look, you're dragging and dropping from the desktop right into this area, and boom. 
That is super cool. I think we could do that. Would you guys like that? <laughs> Maybe not the sharing part. It's funny, when uh, Michael Pick was making this, I got like 14 invitations to view this album. Those are three of the albums that we talked, that some of the slides are based on, actually. This is an example of desire paths manifesting themselves. These are things that you guys have said over and over and over again are things that you want to experience in WordPress. I want to loop back a little bit to some of the survey stuff we talked about. Where are we as a community and how are we using the platform? It's an interesting thing as I travel to WordCamps around the world, um, people always tell me, uh, come up and they're excited that they, they built a WordPress website. They're like, we customized it so much you wouldn't even recognize this. And I started to hear this more and more and more, but I wasn't sure. We now have statistical confirmation that the majority of people, 65% <laughs> say they customize WordPress to be completely unrecognizable. Um, so I wasn't just making this up. A lot of you are doing this. Who in this room has customized WordPress to not be recognizable? It's actually a little bit more than 60%. It's a good thing that we did not survey just this room. However, only 4% customized the admin. I actually kind of like this. <laughs> we work really hard on the admin. <laughs> um, there are plugins out there that like move the navigation to the top or do different things, but I think it actually breaks some of the WordPress way. That if, for example, someone, you set up a WordPress site for someone, you change the admin, they go and get, say, WordPress for Dummies, the book, nothing's actually going to line up. Um, so it's actually, I like that people aren't customizing that too much. We did a straw poll last year. We asked whether people were using WordPress as a blog, as a CMS, or for both. So who, first, who is using WordPress just for a blog? Raise your hand. Who is using it just as a CMS? And who is using it both as a blog and a CMS? So we found a full 92% of the people who took the survey are using WordPress as a CMS. It's an incredible number. Three years ago, this may have been 5%. Um, I would say that the transformation to WordPress as a CMS is nearing full penetrate, like full, we're almost done, uh, which is pretty exciting. So only 8% are using it just for a blog. We also asked, I thought you guys would be interested in this, um, about hourly rates. How much do people charge per hour to build WordPress sites? We got a huge range. <laughs> <laughs> From $5 to $2,000 per hour. It's like building websites for Elliot Spitzer or something. I don't know. <laughs> We took out the outliers on both ends, and we found these averages, an average of 58 and a median of $50. Uh, it'll be interesting. This is, we're just starting this number. We're going to start doing this survey every year. I'm very curious to see where this number moves over time. As WordPress sites become more CMS-like, more complex, and what you guys are able to do becomes more advanced. We had a full 2,800 people that said they were making their living from WordPress, or about 16% of the people who took the survey. Um, that's more people than are employed at many web companies. I mean, it's actually kind of amazing when you think of the number of jobs being created by WordPress. Uh, and we don't know what this actual number is. We don't know how many people didn't take the survey. Uh, so hopefully over time, we'll get a little bit better sense of that. If you are not currently making your living from WordPress, but you would like to, there are some great resources. We've got jobs.wordpress.net, CodePoet, if you're a higher-end consultant, WP Candy Pros is a great place to list yourself. Uh, Woo Jobs, Woo Themes has a great job board. Of course, Automatic, always hiring. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about WordPress growth. Uh, in the first two days of 3.2, we had over half a million downloads of the software. The fastest velocity of upgrades and downloads of WordPress ever. This was WordPress 3.2 Gershwin. We've now passed over 200 million plugin downloads. And to go back to the 8.5% prediction from last year, WordPress has now reached 14.7% of all websites in the world are running WordPress. But we dug in, and we actually found a cooler stat that has not been published before. So this is the first time this is going to be talked about. So we worked with some outside firms to look at active new domains in the US, and basically all new domains being created. And we found that out of every 100 domains that were created, new domains, active domains, 22 of them were running WordPress. 
which means our adoption of new websites is even higher than our current existing uh, market share. So this means that the direction that WordPress is going is not just growing, but it's accelerating. So as I like to say at the end of these, the state of the word is strong. <laughs> Next, I'm very, very excited about what's going to happen in terms of where we're going, the APIs that we're adding in 3.2 and 3.3, and how that's going to influence the plugin and theme developers in the room. I think that we're going to create an open source spectacular <laughs> of these desire paths and virtuous cycles between the plugins and themes um, that hopefully, when we gather here again next year, WordCamps are really, you think you're at a WordCamp right now, you're actually at a family reunion. <laughs> I mean, it's so fun to just look around the room and see so many familiar faces, so many people that have been here. You know, the numbers on the badges, there's some people who have been involved with this for eight years. And um, we're growing something. We're growing something that is not going to be around just this year and next year, but hopefully for decades to come. And setting it up in ways that we hope will be build it for the ages. And uh, that's all I got. Thank <laughs> you.